So yeah. um, we're going to, um, as I said, okay, awesome. I see some U.S. people. That's interesting because right now I'm going to have to join the Spanish uh, stations of the cross in the evening. And I will just join by fit <laughs> because I would not know. So, yeah. um, you know, um, the veneration of the cross and everything um, is going on right now because it's the three o'clock hour. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. I am so proud of us. I don't know if you're proud of, you know, what the Lord has done. Yes. Yeah. I am so proud. I would not have believed that I'll be able to do consistently, you know, a 40 day uh, um, program only by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to him be all the glory. And I pray that it's not going to end. Mm -hmm. I pray it's not going to end with lens that we're going to continue in the same consistency, the same fervor. Amen. 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 So um, if you're just joining us, welcome. It's a beautiful day to thank God for the ultimate sacrifice that our Lord Jesus, you know, made for all of us. We want to start with our 40th day, day 40. Let us start with the evaluation of our 40 day journey. And that way the people that join us, you know, late can still participate fully in the stations of the cross. I want to ask, is there anyone that is in a hurry on this good Friday? No. Is there any person in a hurry to leave the presence of God? Because I'm not. And so we no. are going to worship. As we go through the stations of the cross, we're going to worship. We're going to worship. Can somebody say amen? Amen. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So it's day 40, it's evaluation of this five weeks journey. Whew. In this last week, we meditated on the crucifixion. Coincidentally, what we celebrate, what we commemorate on this Good Friday, we reflected on the ultimate sacrifice of love we reflected on what it means to forgive in the midst of pain, what it means to forgive the deepest of betrayal, what it means to forgive, oh, the deepest of wounds as our Lord demonstrated. We also looked at the true meaning of love, the love that is willing to lay down his life for the sake of his friends. The love that is loyal, that is committed. The love that is faithful, as our Lord demonstrated. We looked at the reality of death and the promise of eternal life, which our Lord Jesus won for us by his crucifixion, by his resurrection, by his ascension. We looked at surrendering, how our Lord surrendered to the will of the Almighty Father at the moment of death. And we were challenged to surrender everything, to lay everything down at the Master's feet and ask him to take control. Take control. We looked at the significance of Mary and John at the foot of the cross. We were challenged by the fact that even in his anguish, in his desolation, he remembered his mother and he entrusted her into the care of John. And we were challenged that we have no excuse not to be compassionate. We, we, we were challenged that we need to honor our Father, our mother, honor those God has put in authority over us. We also looked at the victory hidden in apparent defeat. We talked about this yesterday. How what looked to, you know, the world, if you view it from human eyes, 
seems like defeat. But for those of us who are children of God, what turns out to be the ultimate victory, the victory that our Lord won by his death. And we were reminded that no matter how bleak a situation looks, if we would only hope and trust in God, our Lord will turn everything around for our good. Amen. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. Amen. And so today on this Good Friday, we are invited to take a moment to pause, to reflect, to assess our spiritual journey through the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary. Our journey, our quest for inner healing. Is there someone under the sound of my voice who has experienced inner healing during this 40-day journey? Amen. Shout the loudest, amen. Amen. And if you cannot shout, type the strongest amen that you can type in the chart area. If indeed you have experienced inner healing on this journey that we made, 40-day journey through the sorrowful mysteries of the Holy Rosary. Was there an impact in your life? Type in the chat, shout another resounding amen. Amen. And so before we go on, I'd like everyone in the chat area, everyone, by the special grace of God, to type three things, three, you know, experiences, three key takeaways, three major blessings, three ways that you can, you know, you can describe your experience this past 40 days. In the chat area, we're going to take a few minutes. We can't go through this journey and just be, you know, in euphoria and just be thanking God without really concretizing our experience. What did God do for you during the season? What was your experience? What changed? What changed for you? If you don't want to put it in the general chat, send it as a direct chat. It's not about who you're sharing it with. It's about you acknowledging God for who he is, for what he has done. What are three key things that you are coming away from this season, this 40 days, with what are you taking with you into easter what are you thankful to god for what has god done what have you experienced and i'm going to start by typing in the chat
Okay, so that's my experience and a whole lot more. A whole lot more. Feel free to type away. Those are my experiences and a whole lot more. So we're thanking God for teaching us how to truly forgive, how to let go. We're thanking God for challenging us to be better Christians, to be better Catholics, to be well-rounded in our spirituality, in our contemplative spirituality, meditative spirituality, our devotion to our mother, our devotion to the saints, our commitment to, you know, silent uh, meditation, our commitment to the different devotions, divine mercy, reading, you know, um, sharing the word of God, sharing our testimonies, participating in Bible study. Amen. We thank God for those who learned about patience and perseverance, those who were able to fast throughout the 40 days. We thank God for those whose inner, whose prayer lives were deepened, those who received financial breakthrough. We thank God for the one that received miracles that they had been waiting on God for, for over five years. We thank God for the ones that experienced renewed hope, the ones that experienced the kind of peace that they say they can I mean, the words cannot describe. We thank God for even the discipline to keep a gratitude journal and to be grateful for small things and great things. Amen. Amen. We're still waiting for more testimonies as we continue. And so we are invited today on day 40. And if you're just joining, I asked if anyone is in a hurry and I didn't hear anyone say no. Because we're going to spend time in his presence. What else are we going to be doing on Good Friday? We're going to spend time. We'll finish this and then we're going to get into our uh, um, stations of the cross and we will worship and we will contemplate and we will say we're sorry and we will worship and we'll contemplate. And then we'll go to sleep, you know, at peace that this was our best length so far. Amen. 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 So let's look at the ultimate sacrifice of love and forgiveness in the midst of our pain. The call to forgive, not just when it's a minor offense. The call to forgive, not just, not only when the person comes and says, I am sorry. We're looking at the call to forgive those offenses that we will never receive an apology for. Even the ones that the people will not even show a change of behavior. The call to forgive for the sake of the commander in chief of forgiveness, our Lord. So we're called to reflect on how the understanding of our Lord's ultimate sacrifice has deepened your perspective on love, my brother. Your perspective on love, my sister. How has understanding our Lord's ultimate sacrifice deepened your perspective on love? You are able to type in the chat area. Is there something you want to share with us about this deepening of your perspective on love? Type it in the chat area. What has stood out for you that is different in your understanding of what it means to love sacrificially? In this 40 days, how have your actions day by day reflected a new understanding of love? Feel free to respond in the chat area. Amen. Amen. Yes. Were there times when we sought forgiveness during our Lenten journey? Did we make a deliberate effort to reach out and extend forgiveness to those that were still in our black book, the people that were still prisoners in our unforgiveness prison? What kind of challenges did we face? 
what changes did we experience from just letting go, setting the captives that we have captured, setting them free? How did we feel? I also want us to respond in the chat area, to contemplate in our hearts all that we learned about the true meaning of love and the promise of eternal life. What impacts did all that we learned have on your understanding of what it means to truly love? To love the way Christ loves sacrificially, putting other people's needs ahead of ours, being sensitive, giving even before we are asked, recognizing a need and responding without even the person having to humble themselves to ask us, missing the needs that we have not even been requested of, that have not been requested of us, and meeting the needs of those who can never repay us, the disenfranchised, the poor, the lonely, and also meeting not only material needs, but people's emotional, psychological, spiritual needs. How did we pray more and intercede more for others? What new ways did we find to express love? Please share in the chat area, what new ways did you find, did you identify to be able to share the kind of Jesus love that we learned about? What has changed about our view of death? What has changed about the things that we have been afraid of, the things we were afraid of in the past? How have we become free day by day to surrender ourselves to the Lord and say, Father, Lord, grant me a happy death? And not treat these things as, you know, things that we are afraid of. What has changed about our hope in eternal life secured and won by our Lord Jesus Christ? What has changed? Finally, as we reflect on surrender, all that we learned from our Lord in his surrender to the Father's will, especially in the face of pain, death, disappointment, sickness, just name it. What stood out for us? How did we relate that to our own personal struggles? How did we relate all that we learned to our own personal struggles? Let us share. Amen? Hmm. What inspiration did we draw from our Lord's compassion from our mother Mary's loyalty, faithfulness, consistency in the life of her son, how she did not abandon him. What inspiration did we draw about the necessity for us to always be there for others in their time of difficulty? The times of challenge, the times of suffering. What are we taking away as far as our hope and our assurance that victory is ours in the name of Jesus in every situation, in every circumstance? What are we taking away by the assurance that victory is sure and that our Lord's death? For us, spells of victory, where others see it as defeat. For us as Christians, that's the ultimate victory. And we are sure that in every situation that we encounter, that same victory applies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are we ready to pray? Yeah. So let us pray together. I'll move the microphone. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. 
to identify a specific aspect of our Lord's passion that you feel you are called to embody. What is it about his passion that you feel that you need to reflect more fully in your life? His humility, his love, his surrender, there's so much. Is it his extending forgiveness? Is that what we're going to take forward that every day before we go to bed we will open the gates and let the prisoners set them free whoever has offended us we make a deliberate effort to offer them to god bring them to god in prayer and let them go is it about living out day by day sacrificial love or embracing moments of surrender which trust when we go through something after this after this journey when you're going through something are you going to say oh i had a 40-day journey in the wilderness and i sharpened my sword but i would say he trains your fingers for battle and i am battle ready and i know that this battle is not mine i'm battle ready in the realm of the spirit i'm battle ready in my readiness to pray about the situation and just to pray and leave it to god to pray and leave it to god to pray and let god to surrender with trust because i learned during the 40 days that i must surrender everything or is it carrying hope in the resurrection in our interactions with others we have been mandated to set a concrete goal for how my brother my sister how you would leave out these lessons we've learned and in particular the ones that you identify and you commit to amen amen this is not the end rather it's a gateway it's a wide open door that's leading you and i into the deeper waters of faith and discipleship and as we celebrate commemorate acknowledge the children and the expectation for jubilation on Easter Sunday, may we all renew our commitment to walk in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus, to carry the lessons of his passion and crucifixion into the fabric of every aspect of our lives. And we ask the Holy Spirit to transform our hearts and to make us a source of transformation for the world around us, by his grace, by his love. Amen. Amen. And so I invite us to take time later today and come back to this last day and reflect deeply and go over this concluding part of embracing the journey of Lent. May the Lord accept our thanksgiving for the opportunity to have participated in this 40 days 
of reflecting on the sorrowful mystery and believing God that he will bless our reflection and cause it to become for us a source of inner healing. Amen. 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 We are getting ready to begin the stations of the cross. Today's stations has a connection with the Divine Mercy prayers and an invitation to us at each station to examine our lives. Through the lens of the Ten Commandments, to examine our lives through the lens of the Ten Commandments, to also examine how well we have done in overcoming the vices that we prayed about, that we learned about throughout the Lenten season. We are going to, through the journey with Christ, believe God for the grace to embrace the virtuous dispositions that will replace the vices. Asking the Holy Spirit to help us do better in obeying the Ten Commandments. Amen. 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 If you know the song, please join us in singing it. <clears throat> At the cross, her station he to Yeah. 